welcome to this very first episode of the Making Stories podcast in 2024. Happy New Year. I hope you are all well rested and had a really lovely last few weeks. Um, <clears throat> hours went by super, super, super duper fast. So I have no idea what's what happened there. Um, also, the new year didn't really start exactly how we envisioned. Uh, so Orion is supposed to be back at daycare this week, uh, but we kept him home um, because he has an ear infection and we just wanted to make sure that he's uh, well rested because daycare is also exhausting. So my, you know, deep work week, relaxing start into the new year completely flew out the window. Instead, I'm sitting here recording a bit frantically because there's lots that I want to show you. And I need to record this today because there's a shop update happening, happening in just a couple days. Um, and I haven't shown you what's coming into the shop yet. So bear with me if this first episode is slightly more frantic. Than, uh, than usual. Um, if you're new here, a very, very warm welcome. My name is Hannah Lisa. I'm the owner of Making Stories. We're an online yarn shop uh, focusing on all things sustainability and knitting. And this is the space where I share what's on my needles, off my needles, um, all those sorts of things. Uh, also what's coming to the shop. I have a little um, note sheet here, just in case that I forget something. And I want to start, as always, uh, with knitting. So I have, I actually have three of those since we last saw each other. One of which is in this cute little bag. The other two have reached their recipients already. So I'm going to talk a little bit about them, but I'm not going to be able to show them to you other than in a photo. Um, I always get this urge to clear my needles at the end of a year and this year was no different. So this is something that has been on my needles for quite a while. Um, they haven't been blocked yet, but I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed finishing them. I really enjoyed knitting them. If you've been following the podcast for a little while, you'll recognize these as the crystal socks from issue 10. So this is a really cute sock pattern by uh, Isabella Jubeck, who goes by Wildbra Wildberry Creative. Um, it's a cuff down pattern, something that I don't knit very often, but I really enjoyed this change of a pace. Um, and it has this really beautiful, intricate um, stitch motif running down the front of the leg and of the foot um, which is honestly really easy to memorize and you don't need a cable needle or anything like that so if you like i would say sort of somewhat engaging socks but also great tv knitting this is this is it this is perfect um the back of the leg and the bottom of the foot is soothing stuck in it and what I really liked is the really cool gusset construction because you work the gusset decreases under the under the foot. Um, this is looking all wonky because, like I said, they haven't been blocked. But yeah, I really, really liked working these up. Um, they were very straightforward. I adore knitting socks like these where you have a little bit of an engaging pattern, but then the rest is straightforward. Um, yeah. Very, very happy with these. So they are part of our issue 10, um, which we still have a few copies of. So if you don't have issue 10 and you like these, um, you can grab a copy of issue 10. I knit them in a really beautiful yarn by my friend Yule from Woolen Twine. Um, the original sample was designed for her Corydale sock, which she's put on hiatus because she had a custom sock yarn spun up called Ovis, which is a really nice and sturdy sock yarn. Um, this is the colorway Heather, and that's what I used for my crystal socks. And I really love how beautifully it shows up the stitch pattern. So it's really nice. Um, so yeah, that's my first FO. The second and third FO that I don't have here to show you are the sibling sweaters that I knit for my nephews. So um, my, uh, I, have, I have 
my sister has two two kids um and the older one asked me if i could knit him a sweater when we were visiting him uh, them uh, last summer and i was like of course i can knit you a sweater so i um looked a little bit back and forth and then i found this really amazing pattern by laura penrose called sibling sweater it's a top down drop shoulder striped sweater um, and it's really, it's really gorgeous. It's very straightforward. And I made two of them. One for my older nephew, which I think you have seen in the previous podcast episode. Um, and one for my younger nephew, which I don't think I've shown. Both of them in, in uh, Derero Natura Gilliat, which is a really nice worsted weight yarn with lots of different color options. Um, and I asked my older nephew for his favorite colors and they're pink and blue tealy. So that's what I chose for his sweater. And my younger one, um, uh, my sister said that he really likes yellow. So he got one in yellow and uh, sage. So I thought those were really, really beautiful, very fun color combinations, especially for kids. And I very much enjoyed knitting the pattern. So yeah, there's going to be a picture here. So, uh, so you'll see how they look like. The third knitting project that I've brought today with me um, is something that has um, has jumped on my needles out of necessity because I realized when we were leaving for our um, Christmas visit to my in-laws that I only had a few more weeks until we're going skiing and I really need a new skiing sweater. That was the whole idea um, for launching sweater kits uh, with Manchelopis earlier uh, in the earlier last fall, um, but I hadn't actually cast mine on. Um, now I pivoted slightly uh, from the original pattern that I wanted to knit um, and um, I'm really happy with, with, what I, with what I chose. So I am knitting the Winter Woods sweater by Jessica McDonald. You might remember this because we also did kits for this, I think, early last year. It's a beautiful color work yoke sweater um, that's knit in Manchalopi cell double. And that's one of the reasons why I slightly deviated from my plan. Uh, because the original pattern that I wanted to knit um, was with one strand of Manchalopis. And I was like, okay, this is going to take me quite a long time. And I don't actually have that time. And I'm really happy. Um, this honestly was quite a quite a labor of love. So I have separated uh, the sleeves and the body. Um, so you can see this is quite a, uh, I think it's gonna fit me really well. It's gonna be a bit oversized, um, which I quite like because I like to have a lot of movement in my shoulders. And as this is a sweater that I plan um, to wear when we're skiing and hiking, I think movement or that it allows for movement is really important. Um, and yeah, it has this really nice long neck ribbing, which I also really like. And then just lots of different motifs in the color work yoke, um, which I'm not going to lie. Some of those rows got really, really long before you're splitting for the sleeves. Um, but I just kept working on it. And now I'm almost done with the um, color work at the body. There's a little bit of color work here and then it's just going to be smooth sailing and stuck in it. Um, there's also going to be a little bit of color work at the sleeves, but I'm very confident that I can finish um, this sweater by January 20th, which is when we're going on our skiing vacation. Um, I'm knitting this in Manchelopis. The main color is Gris Claro, a really beautiful light gray, and the contrasting color is Lavanda. Um, and I really adore this. I think it's going to look great. So that was the Winterwood sweater by Jessica McDonald. And um, I have to be really disciplined to work on this because I actually don't really feel like knitting a lot at the moment. Not that I don't love knitting anymore. I very much do. But we have a new member of the household. I got myself a spinning wheel. I'm so excited. So I've been wanting to learn how to spin um, for a good few months now. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I I had tried drop spindling a good few years back, I think before Oren was born and it was nice and it, I liked it. But also, honestly, I couldn't really see the point because 
it just takes a long, 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 long time to work up um, any amount of yarn that you can use. And I, as much as I loved working with the fiber, I was like, all right, at the end of the day, I want to have yarn that I can knit with. Um, so over the course of the last few months, I started dreaming about a spinning wheel. And then my parents, my sweet, sweet parents, gave me a really beautiful book for Christmas as a gift, um, which is all about uh, wool. And I'm going to insert a little picture here. So it's a German book, but it's basically a study of all of the different sheep breeds. Um, and it goes into prepping wool. It goes into spinning. It goes into how to spin for different kinds of things. It goes into felting as well. Um, and <laughs> Then we were in the car driving down to my in-laws and I was like, well, I'm just going to check um, eBay Kleinanzeigen, which is uh, sort of like Craigslist uh, here in Germany to see whether there are any secondhand spinning wheels in Berlin. I wonder, I just, I wonder what's out there. And there were a lot of decorative spinning wheels. And then there was one where it was like, ooh, this looks nice. It was a Lue S10. Um, I'm going to insert a picture of it here, which is, um, a really distinctive spinning wheel. Um, now there are lots of different versions, but the original version, which I believe I got, like, I got like a, like a pretty, like it's in really good shape, but I think it's one of the earlier ones from the seventies or eighties has, um, one wheel without any spokes. So there's like a little bit of a, um, there's a little hole in there, but like, other than that, um, it's just like one solid wheel. Um, and I honestly just really like the look of it. Um, I haven't really done a lot of research and I know what, like what kind of stopped me, I looked into finding a spinning course here in Berlin and there weren't any, and then everything that I found online was like, all right, you need to try different spinning wheels before you commit to one and stuff. And me being me, I sat in that car, I looked at all of those listings, and I kept coming back to that Lue S10. Um, I looked at the website of Lue, and um, I mean, they're still around, you can still get bobbins and stuff, and I just really fell in love with that wheel. <laughs> so I messaged I messaged the person who had put it on eBay Klein and saying, I was like, is this by any chance still available? And they immediately messaged me back and were like, yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to be back in Berlin in a few days. Can I come by and pick it up? They were like, sure, I'm going to reserve it for you. So when we were back, I drove over there and I got it. So it's a complete Lue S10 spinning wheel for a fraction of the price what you would pay for it new in really good condition. Um, and I'm really, really happy with it. So I, so I took it home. I wiped it down with water and then also with a little bit of, with a little bit of vinegar. Um, and, uh, <laughs> that I sat there and I was like, I have no idea where to start, which is when my parents' Christmas gift came in super handy because that had a lot of really good exercises and tips on how to get started. So I said like, if you're starting with a spinning wheel to just treadle, I'm hoping I pronounced that correctly, um, treadle for like a good while, like maybe a couple of hours before you do anything else, just so that you get the rhythm of it. And if you can read a book or like watch a movie while traveling and the, and the wheel runs smoothly, then you're good to go. So I did that. Um, and then obviously I had also already ordered spinning fiber because I mean, you need something to spin with, right? Um, I started with it and I was like, oh shit, like nothing will hold. I don't even know which parts should be moving. Um, and I was like, all right, I'm just going to take it one step at a time. So on one day I figured out which parts of the wheel should actually be moving. <laughs> um, so the flyer and the bobbin and how the bobbin, no, I, my wheel has a flyer brake, how the brake was working and stuff. Um, and then I went back to the book and I went through the, um, which they highly recommended. I had read that. I was like, no, I don't need these exercises. I'm going to be fine. Yeah, I should have known better. So they had a set of exercises and how to essentially play a little bit with fiber 
um, to get to this motion of drafting, which is when you take um, fibers out of the fleece or out of the out of the bat or whatever you're spinning with, and you're basically feeding them into the spinning wheel. Um, and they had some really low key um, uh, exercises. So they the first one I think was uh, to take um, any any sort of little um, like I, I took like a chopstick um, uh, and and then you would just draft the fiber, drill it a little bit so that you had a little bit of yarn and then roll it around the stick and then use the stick essentially as an extension of your hand. And then there were a few exercises um, related to that. And I, I did those and I was like, oh, okay. Like, I don't really feel like I'm very good at this yet, but let's just give it a try at the wheel. Um, and just like these simple exercises, they already helped my hands realize what they were supposed to do. And I was like, okay, so this is now beginner's mind. I just need to practice, practice, practice. And what's really fun is that the last time that I learned anything new was before RN when I started, uh, when I did a pottery course. Um, and I can't remember the last time, well, the t last time I learned anything new before that must have been when I learned knitting. I mean, obviously I've learned tons since, but you know, like something that requires a lot of hand, eye, body coordination and building up muscle memory, all those sorts of things. Um, and I was like, okay, this is really fun because I know myself and I know to be gentle with myself and I know that I will want to be perfect at this from the get-go, but I won't be and I'm going to be okay with it. So I really, really just enjoy learning something new, learning how to spin. Um, and I, um, yeah, I, I was like, all right, this is, is, is really hard. Like the first few tries were really hard. And then at some point I was like, okay, I think I kind of get now what my hands are supposed to do. And then you get into like a little bit of a rhythm for like two seconds. And then Oren comes around and asks me a question and the rhythm is thrown off again. And I tried again. And um, every one of my friends, which I have the sweetest friends, like the, everyone, I, I basically texted everyone who I knew had a spinning wheel when I got mine. And I was like, look what I just got. And everyone was so excited. And they were like, you just need to keep going. You know, it's going to be hard at the beginning, but also there's a really steep learning curve. So I did, and I've made it, I've made an effort to do the spin every day. And I really, really, really enjoy it. I love it so much. It's honestly, it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling, like learning something new, but then also working with fiber and like, I mean, I know, I know quite a bit about fiber, so it's not as unfamiliar as for someone who's never a net or <laughs> doesn't have an online yarn shop. So um, it's just really, really, really enjoyable. It also satisfies a very different part of my brain than knitting, I find. It's for me much more like pottery, where I often felt after my hours at the wheel that I was completely zen, that it was just, it was about being in my body. And this is very much more about being in my body, um, listening to what my hands are doing, feeling the fiber. So I really, really enjoy that. And I also find it a really good exercise. I don't know how many of you uh, who are watching have little ones in their life. So Orin is four now. And obviously that's a period in a kid's life where they were still learning tons of things. He just learned how to ride his bike this past summer. He is taking swimming lessons. And so this notion of practicing something over and over again, doing something over and over again until you've built up muscle memory is something that's very present in his life right now but it's also not something that he often sees from us like i mean when like how often do you see an adult suck at something like when he's riding his bike when he learned how to ride his bike he was like well but you know how to do it and we're like yeah and we've known for like 30 plus years um you just need to practice but that's kind of an empty thing to say um because the they only see other kids, you know, like maybe practice something when they're at daycare and not really adults. And so I really make it make an effort to also practice spinning in front of Oren and narrate it to him. That sounds maybe a little bit funny, but I'm like, all right, 
I'm going to go and practice at my spinning wheel now. And he's like, well, how long do you have to practice until you can do it? I'm like, I have no idea. It's probably going to take me weeks or months. And he's like, oh, what? I'm like, yeah, it's just like how you learn how to ride your bike. So I think it's a really good tangible reminder or like tangible thing for him to experience with me to see how I suck at something and how slowly over time by doing something over and over again, I'm getting better at it because I am getting better at it. And that's also part of the fun. Um, I have brought my very first hand spun skein of yarn, um, which is in this bag. Um, so as I said, I got myself a spinning fiber um, from a few different sources. I had asked on Instagram for a spinning fiber recommendations. Um, if any of you have any, you know, spinning fiber dyers, makers, um, that you love, leave them in the comments down below. I am very much looking forward to trying out lots of lots of different makers in that in that space. Um, also, a little note to that: um, I very very firmly believe in that. Also, beginners deserve to work with good materials. So there might be some of you who are like, "What? You started practicing with a hand dyed." Um, uh, with a hand dyed top, I'm like, yeah, I did, because that's what I wanted. It's the same thing if, you know, anyone asks me how they could start in it, I'm like, well, what do you want to make? Well, like, I don't know, everyone tells me a scarf. I'm like, well, do you want to make a scarf? And if the answer is yes, that's great. But if the answer is no, I actually want to make a sweater, then I tell everyone, just start making a sweater, because there's nothing as motivating as working with something or towards something that you actually really, really want to work with or towards. And the same thing goes for me for this. So I, I bought lots of really lovely spinning fiber. I'm going to show you some, some of the things that already arrived. So this was, um, this was a top from Frau Wölfchen, who is a German dyer of spinning fiber. And now it looks like this. So this is my very first hand spun skein of yarn. Um, I love it. I love it. It's very far from perfect, but I can see my progress throughout the skein. I love the colors. Um, it taught me a lot of things, you know, like over the course of this one single skein of yarn, I got so much better at spinning and then I started plying and I got much better at plying, just plying this one skein of yarn. So I am very much in love with this. I also got another braid from Frau Wölfchen, which I wanted to show you because it's super, super beautiful. Look at these colors. Aren't they gorgeous? Just look at it. It's so beautiful. Um, so this is a mix of 67% Corydale and 33% Tassa silk. Tassa silk is pea silk, so it's silk that is harvested after the silk worms have become moths and have broken out of their cocoons. Um, and the colorway is called There May Be Giants. Um, this is 150 grams. And yeah, I have no idea what this is going to be. Um, I am kind of thinking like... I mean, because silk is really good for socks. Corydale is a pretty long staple fiber, so that's also good for socks. Maybe I can make some, make myself some really good sock yarn. Also, I don't really care. Like, I just want to spin this up, and if it becomes like a thick and thin thing, then I'll figure out something to do with it. So yeah, it's just a really beautiful, really beautiful braid. Um, the other, the other person that I ordered fiber from is um. Fotokartenträume. Her name is Maria and she came highly recommended, especially for her Rolex, which are like little, they almost look like little cigars of fiber. Um, and I ordered some from her and she was the sweetest. She immediately messaged me on Instagram and was like, go, 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 go. You're doing so great. Keep going. And sent me like a couple of little extra things in the parcel. And I was just, this is the sweetest. So I have another parcel from her coming in because I need more fiber to spin. But I wanted to show you this. So this is a sock set called Himmel und Erde. So uh, heaven and earth, essentially. Um, it's 91% um, 91 wool, 
five percent silk uh, and four percent viscose, um, and it has lots of different wool braids blended in there. So it has Schwarzkopf, White Faced Woodland, German Merino, Ida Wolle, and Black Welsh, and I really love it. I mean, look at how good those colors are. So these two, I believe, are just Black Welsh, um, and in her listing on Etsy, Maria said that these could be used for contrasting heels, cuffs, and toes, which I love the idea. So, so yeah. So, um, so these are really fun. I spun up um, a Rolex, an extra Rolex that she sent me, and I really liked. I really liked the experience of spinning that. So, um, I think I might just maybe already start with this one. Um, or with a braid. I don't know yet. We'll see. But, oh my god, this is so much fun. And it's an absolute rabbit hole. I'd love to know whether you're spinning. Um, is that something that you do? Like drop spindle spinning, wheel spinning, any tips, recommendations, makers? I want to know everything. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, okay. Last section of today's podcast is everything about the shop. Um, so I first have a pattern announcement. Um, as of January 5th, the pattern rights for issue 10 have been reverted or have will have been reverted to the designers. So some of those will be available as individual patterns on our website. Keep an eye on our newsletter for the announcement of which ones exactly. Um, and you might see others popping up on Ravelry. Um, give them a warm welcome. Uh, as I said, we do have, we still do have issue 10 um, copies in print, um, but I know that not every magazine issue is for everyone. And if there's like one pattern in there that you absolutely loved, but for the rest you were like, nah, I'm not gonna buy a magazine just for one pattern. I completely get it. Um, go get the individual pattern. Then we have our first shop update of the year happening on Monday, January 8th. It's going to go live at 9 a.m. Berlin time for the collective and the sock knitter email list. If you're not yet subscribed to the sock knitter email list, I would highly recommend so. I'll put the link in the down bar below. Um, for everyone else, the general launch will be at noon on the same day. And this is going to be a sock shop update, which is why both the collective and the sock knitter email list have early access. Now, when I um, revamped our sock subscriptions last year, I already hinted at sock shop updates coming with additional yarn from the sock subscriptions. Because I also understand, like the sock subscriptions, both the sock box and the sock skein, they're mystery, right? Like, you know, the makers beforehand, you know, the inspiration, but you don't really know exactly what's coming. Um, and that's great for some, like we have amazing feedback for, for those boxes and skeins, but also there were quite a few last year who said, well, we actually kind of like to see what we get before we buy some. And I totally get that, which is why, um, we said we would introduce biannual sock shop updates um, with the yarns that we had in the sock subscriptions. And January sees the first of such an update. So we're going to have um, we're going to have two different sock yarns, the sock yarn from October and the sock yarn from January. We're going to have two different stitch marker sets from October and from January. And we're going to have some extra fun um, things that were part of the sock box in January. So I'm going to start with the with the October ones. In October, our theme was fall berries and our feature dyer, feature dyer was Julie from Black Eye Yarns. And I've known Julie, I think since I started making stories and she's amazing. She is one, she was one of the first people who I met who actually had her non superwash yarn custom spun because there weren't a lot of options available back then for dyers. Um, and when she first got her sock yarn, I was so excited because there weren't that many all natural sock yarns out there. So what we're gonna have in the shop is Judy's Killin' Sock, which is an 80% blue face lesser and 20% mohair blend. 
The BFL is sourced from the R farm, which is sort of just a hop across um, from where Julie lives and dyes her yarn. The mohair is sourced in South Africa. It's an RMS standard mohair, so the um, highest mohair, ethical mohair standard. Um, and they're spun into this really beautiful high twist sock yarn. That's super great. Like I have a pair uh, in this currently on my needles. I haven't worked on them in quite a while. Um, but yeah, it's really great yarn. We'll have two different colorways. We have ripening rose hips, which is this really beautiful blush pink with hints of pops of red in there, like slightly speckled pops of red. And then we'll also have Hetero Harvest, which also has this blush pink, but then goes more into the violets, purples and blues in terms of speckling. These are super beautiful. Like I really, really love them. Um, so yeah. These will be available. These were, um, so we only have, I should say that for all of the products that I show you, we only have really limited quantities available and they won't be coming back. So if you like what you see, better move fast when the shop update is live, because especially the stock shop updates, they tend to sell out really quickly. So in October, we also had a really lovely stitch marker set in our box by Terra Clay. Terra Clay is a Dutch company run by Teddy, and Teddy is a wonderful maker who works with polymer clay. And Teddy designed this really cute stitch marker set for us. So you have one main marker, which is this sweater with a berry print on it. And then two markers that are, that have, I hope you can see that, that are imprinted with knit stitches. All three come with golden jump rings. Um, and they're really cool. Um, I've been using mine on a lot of different projects. So I really, really love them. Very, very cool. So these are from Tarek. Now for January. Everyone's January sock subscriptions should have arrived already. If you don't, if you haven't gotten your sock subscription for January or uh, your sock box yet, um, skip the next part of the video because there is going to be spoilers. I'm going to show what was in January's sock box now because we'll have all three products in our sock shop update. I'm going to start with the yarn, um, which is very different than what I just showed you from Julie. Um, January's theme was cozy and the vibe was neutrals, um, warm browns, cold browns, caramels, um, a good cup of coffee. And can we just talk about how amazing this color is? This is like a cold brown warm gray best neutral i think of all times essentially like i want to have a sweater in this seriously um this is the fisherman non-superwash corridale mohair base by maison corlaine this is a 50 percent corridale 50 percent mohair um base that has been hand dyed in um in france by aurore and it's this really, really gorgeous color. So we'll have this. And as far as stitch markers go, we have these beautiful walnut stitch markers, a set of four from Anive. Anita is based in Germany. And then we also have some really super cute mugs from Eulenschnitt. Um, they're based in Germany. All of these mugs are hand thrown in Portugal. They're perfect for a morning coffee, dishwasher save, and really, really cute. Um, they have this little heart imprinted in the front. So I'm looking at my laptop, which is running out of battery, which is why I'm speeding things up. All of these will be available on January 8th at 9 a.m. for the collective and the sock matter email list at noon Berlin time for everyone else. Hope to see you there. Do let me know your favorite spinning fiber dyers and 
Happy New Year! See you again in a couple of weeks. Bye!